as you no doubt saw in the opening just a second ago, that was just a small fraction of the accidents that I have personally experienced over the last two weeks in the NIS series. Now the crazy thing is, is that 90% of those accidents could have been avoided because they were almost all single car accidents where somebody just got loose and spun out or lost control of the car by themselves. And with this next gen car, when these cars get just a little loose, it is so hard to save them because of the way the suspension is on these cars. The weight transfer is absolutely insane. And so we see constantly the slightest little bobble turn into somebody shooting down and then immediately making a 90 degree angle right back into the wall. So in this video, I'm going to cover with you the three main reasons why you are spinning out in the next gen car so you can hopefully put an end to it and avoid it all together. <laughs> What's up everybody, Thomas Brandon here. Thank you very much as always for joining me. And like I said, I'm gonna be covering pretty much the main reasons why you might be spinning out or find yourself spinning out a ton, losing control, that type of thing in the NASCAR next gen. Now, like I said, over the last two weeks in the NIS series, which has been Fontana and uh, Vegas, I've had just in my splits alone about 20 cautions and my friends who I've been racing with who are also in different splits, you know, Jordan, Jeremy, Kurt, you know, Greg, David, all these guys, they too have been having double digit digit cautions and their splits as well. And the crazy thing is, is they're seeing basically what I'm seeing, which is a ton of single car accidents that are just basically somebody losing control of the car so like i said in this video i'm going to tell you the main causes for that and this really comes down to just three things so that way you can hopefully put an end to all this and be done with it because when we get those long green flag runs these cars have been so much fun they really have like i absolutely love these things now since we've gotten the new update and when we get those long green flag runs it is it, they're just awesome to drive and they really are just an open book in terms of what you can do with them you can get these things dialed in for long runs short runs you can have them do good in the middle you can set it up for you know just a, a multiple different ways and be fast and be successful and don't forget there's all these different ways that you can do your pitch strategies and so it really just makes things far more interesting and far more competitive and fun when we get those long green flag runs so hopefully this will help a lot of people because like i said the vast majority of these spin outs and wrecks can be avoided um if you look at you know if it falls under the category of these three things so with that all being said let's dive into number one which is preheating the oven now you might be wondering tell me what the hell are you talking about but the reason i refer to it as preheating the oven is because we've all been there before where we want to like i don't know make a pizza in the oven right and what does it say we got to preheat the oven to 450 degrees and we that sucks right like i don't i don't want to spend 10 minutes waiting for the oven just to warm up so then i have to wait another 25 minutes to bake my damn pizza like i just want to turn the oven on and throw the thing in well what's the problem well if you do that guess what your pizza comes out like crap you got to cook it longer because it didn't cook all the way through and then you end up burning it right like it, it just becomes this nightmare it's the same thing with these cars it really is you've got to let them warm up and it's not just the tires okay so you need to be at race pace you know a few laps i want to say a few laps i don't mean like one i'm we're talking like three to five laps to really get this thing you know actually warmed up to where now it's like all right you can really start pushing it you know getting out there and pushing it hard now i know that that is a horrible thing to to do right there's nothing worse than the green flag drop and then now it's like all right i need to be patient for a few laps and let this thing come in but i promise you if you do that you will erase the vast majority of your accidents that happen in the first couple of laps. I cannot count how many times we go green and we don't make it a lap because there's an accident. It's because somebody's out there trying to make moves and they're full throttle diving into turn one on cold tires. So be patient. Let the thing come to temp, okay? Because it has an effect, not just tires, but brakes. I mean, it really does, okay? You can test this yourself. Go out onto a track, all right? And then go out there, full throttle into turn one, 
all right, and see what the car does. Yes, there might be times where the car sticks, but there's also going to be a lot of times where it slides or spins out or go into a corner like we've got Phoenix coming up this week and get hard on the brakes going into turn one on cold tires and cold brakes and see what happens. You're probably going to lock up and slide. Okay, so you've got to be patient. Let things heat up. Let things come to temp. And if you do that, I promise you that you're going to see far less accidents in the first few laps. Number two is diff preload. Now, this little bad boy here is causing people all kinds of problems, um, especially those who get a few laps on their tires. So what this does is diff preload is it it's it's uh, as you can see here it's basically just differential lock in the rear end all that you need to know to keep this really simple is is the higher that this number is the tighter the car will be on entry and then the looser it'll be on exit more more specifically on throttle okay and that's the key so what has been happening is and i've been seeing this a lot especially if we actually get you know a green flag run of like 10 or more laps is people will go into the corner and then all of a sudden the car is snapping loose on them on exit. And I've even heard a lot of people talk about, man, my car is really loose. Well, actually what most people are experiencing is, is they're going into the corner, they're cutting the wheel hard left, they're on the throttle on exit. And when those front tires finally, when the car is actually scrubbed off enough speed where the front tires get that grip, then the thing snaps around on them. Now, there is also a chance too that when you, you you might not be cutting the wheel hard left, you might be doing everything right and you just roll back into the throttle and now the car starts to come around. That also can be diff preload. This little adjustment right here, okay? Your setup is almost built completely around this. It really ha it can really have that big of effect depending on how big this number is. 25 pounds, right? Like this will actually have some some significant effects if this with this setup and this is just the iRacing setup. If I drop this to zero, it's going to make a difference on the entry and the exit. Absolutely. If this is at five or ten and I take it to zero, it's not going to be that big of a deal. You're not going to really notice it. Okay. It'll be you know a a minor notice or minor change but when you're talking about going from 25 to zero you're gonna notice that okay so what you need to do is is you need to look at this and ask yourself what is going on when i'm going into the corner is the car too tight when i'm off throttle if the question is yes and then it's too loose on exit this diff preload probably needs to be adjusted now another thing to know about this diff preload is is that you don't need it to be fast okay it's not like you have to run diff preload you can absolutely turn this off and be fast last week at vegas the setup that i built for the insiders and the setup that i ran myself in my nis race um i had we had zero diff preload and i was at one point i had tires that were t like 15 laps older than everybody else on the track i was running third and catching the leaders okay had i not been wrecked i i don't know if i would have won but i would have definitely had a very good shot at at least a top three finish okay that's no exaggeration um the car was good it was fast we had zero diff preload okay you don't have to run diff preload to be fast it's just an adjustment like anything else i always talk about this the car needs to fit you your driving style okay when i have setups that i put this in it is for a reason it's not just because it's like oh well i racing's got it so i gotta use it no it's for a specific reason okay so look at it that way do some testing with this go out turn it off all right just get rid of it turn it off and see how the car feels now when you turn it off you might find that the car might be a little bit more loose on um, entry and a little bit tighter on exit so you might have to make some small adjustments to compensate for that but give it 10 15 20 laps before making changes these cars when it comes to the long run they change a ton you can go out and do a run of 30 or 40 laps and like man this thing still feels pretty good and then that last 20 laps you know at a track like phoenix for example the thing just goes to hell in a handbasket so play around with this do some testing with it get a feel for it okay but i can tell you just straight up without you doing any testing if you find the car is just way too tight on exit or on entry and then it's snapping loose and you're when you're turning left on your on throttle it's snapping loose on exit you've got a problem and more than likely it's diff preload number three is stalled diffuser 
Now, a stalled diffuser or diffuser stalling, it's, it's just a fancy way of it saying, like, it's not working. Okay, like, that's all that it really is. So, with the diffuser, the main thing with these diffusers is that there is a range that this diffuser needs to be in terms of the distance from the ground. All right. So, a lot of people think that, hey, the higher I'm going to move this thing up, the more downforce we're going to create because it's got more room to suck down and then it's going to pull us down. We're going to be generating all this downforce and that's not the case, especially when these things lighten up because of fuel. Now, keep in mind, fuel, one gallon is about six pounds and you've got a 20 gallon tank. So imagine that you're taking, you know, after just 10 gallons, you're taking 60 pounds off the rear end. But here's the thing. You're not just removing weight from the rear end. When you're removing that weight from the rear end, you are also changing the balance of the car. It's shifting the balance as it's decreasing weight off the rear. So what happens is, is now this rear end is getting higher and higher and higher. And as you go into the corner, you get that, that, that car that all of a sudden it just like kind of snaps and then it straightens out. That is your diffuser stalling. Okay. Then you're going into that corner and what's happening is, is that thing is lifting up and it's snapping and then it's recatching. Okay. And that is a def installed diffuser. So what you need to do is, is you need to focus on the ride heights of this car at speed. It does not matter what the ride heights say in the garage. It really doesn't. As long as it passes the, the um, tech, you're fine. What matters is what are my ride heights when I'm at speed? All right. When I'm on throttle, when I'm going into the corner, what are my ride heights at? You want to get these things set to where at the start of the run, they're at, they're low. And then as you lose fuel and that thing raises up, it doesn't raise so high to where the diffuser will stall when you enter the corner. So a lot of people who have been having this problem, one of the things I've been telling them is, is just, hey, lower the rear end a couple of clicks on each side. Just lower that down both, both ends, lower it down until it stops doing that. And then as it stops doing that, then what I want you to do, go out, run a bunch of laps. And then if it starts doing it again, after 20, 30, 40 laps, you need to lower the car some more. And basically just do that until you get it to where now that diffuser is going to work the entire fuel run. All right, so those are the three main reasons that you are probably spinning out in the next gen car. All right, I mean, I know that this video pretty, you know, bare bones and straight to the point but it really is that simple all right you need to literally just let the tires and you know let the car come to temp okay it really makes a huge difference if it's a bigger track you know mile and a half you know two mile track it's going to take you know two to three laps all right if it's a smaller track you know below a mile and a half it might take up to five it really might okay but just let the thing come to temp a lot of times when these cars are on cold tires, they're really, really tight. They don't want to turn. So just take it easy. All right. Take it easy. Don't worry about if you lose a couple positions, it's no big deal, right? These, these races are 50% the real world length, right? You're talking about 130, 140 laps at some of these tracks. Like you've got time to get those positions back. Give the car a chance to come to temp. It'll make a huge difference difference adjust that diff preload find something that you like all right know that it's there know if the car is coming around that's why or potentially that is why and then like i said if that thing's snapping like that on the entry and it just does it all of a sudden after you know a few laps or something there's a high likelihood that your diffuser is stalling out because it's now too high on entry so just lower that rear end down and that should help you but that's going to do it all for this video. Now, really quick, do me a favor. If you like this, you already know what to do. Hit the like, share, all that other good stuff. And please get this out to as many people that you know who run these cars, especially those who have had these issues. Um, this can be, like I said, it, 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 it's a nightmare. It really can be a nightmare with these things. And a lot of times people don't know what's going on. They don't know what's happening. Hit this stuff out there because these little things can make huge huge gains for you they really can so get it out to as many people that you know who might be struggling with this stuff also um the motec workbooks are now available on the website um if you want to head over and check that out you're gonna do just go to school of racing dot net uh slash motec um and it's there so um you can check that stuff out as well if you're interested and then 
if you can also you also want to join our community you know the discord server all that other good stuff just go to schoolsurveys.net click the button that says join community and then you can get access to all of our free stuff that we've got and then lastly if you want to join me like i said before for my live streams i do live stream on uh you know tuesday wednesday thursdays fridays i mean it just really depends um this week i will be live streaming i don't actually know yet i gotta wait for my sense of baseball schedule i think it's going to be tuesday and thursday this week um so yeah so tuesday and thursday this week i'll be live streaming and i think also sunday um i think i've my son's got practice friday this week so i'm not gonna run nis on friday i think i'm gonna be doing it sunday morning so yeah but anyways just make sure that you're subscribed and you click that notification bell so you know when i go live and it's been a lot of fun we've had a great group that comes out um there's you know like 30 40 50 of us and it's just yeah just a good time um hanging out and it just it makes all those cautions that i've been experiencing a lot more fun when i got people to talk to so if you want to join me for that links for everything down in the description below so that's going to do it thank you very much as always for joining me and until next time i want to wish you good luck good racing take care